the members of what? A harlot, certainly not. Or do you know that he who is joined to the harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Now let's go to Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 24. Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 24. And when you have to say amen. amen. Genesis is the first book of the Old Testament. Bereshit in Greek, Reshit. It's the first book to start the beginning of everything. Genesis 2 and 24 says, Therefore shall a man leave his what? Father and what? And cling on to his what? The two shall become what? Now, it's pretty interesting because let's take a journey on the meaning of various words. The word harlot is the word porn. Say porn. And the word literally means a prostitute. And so I want to give you the backdrop of how ancient people practice fornication. Then the word of fornication is the word pornea. Say pornea. Where we get our word pornography. And the word pornea means illicit intimacy. Say illicit intimacy. What is illicit intimacy, Elder Manuel? Thank you for asking the question. Illicit intimacy is illegal intimacy. Well, what is intimacy that is illegal in the sight of God? Well, let's travel down the road of illegal intimacy. What is illegal? Illegal intimacy is when man sleeps with man. That's illegal according to the scripture. Illegal intimacy is when woman tries to sleep with woman. That is illegal. Illegal intimacy is when a married man or a married woman is sleeping with somebody outside of the marriage covenant. That is illegal. Illegal intimacy is not just limited to humans. Illegal intimacy is when man sleeps with beasts. And it's called beastality. Are you with me? <laughs> and so understand that fornication has a broad meaning. It's not just, you know, a person who's unmarried having sex. It encompasses such a broad stream of thoughts. Are you with me? And so, in this particular passage, in 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, what is that, 16? Chapter 6, verse 15 and 16, the Bible says that he that joins himself with the heart becomes what? One. Now this is a very dangerous text right here, because if you go down a little further, it says every sin that we commit, we commit outside of the body, but the sin of fornication, we sin against our own body. It's amazing that there are sins of lying and stealing and killing and all these sins that people commit through our scripture. But fornication is the only sin where the Bible says that you sin against your own body. Are you hearing me tonight? Yeah. Now this is a heavy subject matter because I was the partner. Why is it that this particular sin is a sin where we sin against our own body and all the other sins are sin outside of the body? Are there consequences for sinning? Of course. But this particular sin, the Bible says, is a sin against your own body. Yeah. Let's talk about your body. God established man in the beginning where man is number one, his body belongs to God. Say, my body belongs to God. And number two, your body belongs to your mate. Say, your body belongs to your mate. So ultimately, the goal of God is that you are saved and that you belong to him. And then when you're married, you belong to your mate. Matter of fact, the Bible says when you're married, the husband's body belongs to the wife and vice versa. The wife's body belongs to the husband. You belong to each other. Now watch this. In the beginning, Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 24, it says, Therefore shall a man, say amen. amen. The Hebrew word for man is the word ish. And the word for woman is isha. Say ish. ish. And say isha. Number 16, do you not know that he who is joined to the harlot, and a harlot is, is what? what? What is the harlot? All right, we're saying a prostitute is one body with her. Say one body with her. For the two, he says, shall become what? One flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one. So verse 18 says what? Flee what? Flee what? Sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. So in other words, it was never the will of God for you to unite yourself to somebody who is not your husband or somebody who is not your wife. That was never the intention of God. So you're taking your temple and you're uniting yourself with somebody that you're not in a covenant relationship with. Do you understand how dangerous that is in the sight of God? Now when God tells you not to do something, He understands how you're made. And He understands that the only way you are to unite with a person is to come in a relationship with them because He knows 
clothes that when you're not in covenant relationship, something happens to you emotionally. Something, something happens to you psychologically. Something happens to you physically. And sometimes you can't explain it, but you can feel it. I ain't never had Bible study class this quiet in my entire 12 years of teaching. 